Broadcasting from Silicon Valley, California, this is Conversations with Jenny Lynn. You're watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn, and today my guest is a 24-year-old stunning beauty from the island of St. Lucia, and her name is Evelyn Day. And she is a, she's an advocate for the elderly and the youth. Evelyn, thank you for taking the time to share your story with me on Conversations with Jenny Lynn and welcome. Thank you for having me. I, I really enjoy being here today. I am so thrilled that you could take the time out to talk to us. So Evelyn, you are a native of St. Lucia, is that correct? Yes, I was born and raised here. And um, you've, have you lived your entire life in St. Lucia? I spent some time in, uh, in Boston. I went to college in Boston for a couple of years. And then I went back a few years later. So I consider Boston a second home to me. So how long did you stay in Boston? Uh, for two years at one point and then for a whole year at another point. And now you're back in St. Lucia. Yes, due to uh, unforeseen circumstances, i.e. the passing away of my mom, oh. I found myself back in St. Lucia taking on uh, her role. I am so sorry you lost your mother. I know it can't be easy for anyone to lose their mom. We'll, we'll come back to that, but what was life like for you when you moved to Boston, having been, um, having been raised the initial part of your life in, in an island? Um, well, on an island where there's only about 170,000 people, and most times you know everyone or someone knows you through you know, the six lines of uh, people, um, moving to Boston was a complete cultural change um i found myself being very lost at times physically i actually getting lost on the subway system and you know mentally lost because i did not have the support system like what i would have at home where all my family is here so did uh, did you um go to school there while you were there Yes, I attended a college for two years before I left. What was that like? That was fun, actually. Um, I ended up becoming, I ended up getting a job as a service leader, and that required me to take volunteers, uh, gather volunteers from the Office of Community Engagement and take them to volunteering opportunities around the city and outside the city and engaging in volunteering activities at the, same, at the same time. But I got paid to do it, so it was, it was a, a nice balance. Did, do you miss that, or, do you, or are you happy that you're back in St. Lucia? Um, I am happy that I'm back home, because I get to be with my family, and everything that I've learned from Boston and from my volunteering opportunities, I've literally taken all those, um, ideas and what I was doing and incorporating it into the work that I'm doing at home. So I'm bringing a little bit of Boston back home on a smaller scale. That's great. So did, what did you think of the winters? Oh, I was, I was in, I was in Boston for one of the worst winters ever. I think it was back in 2012, I think. And I was, I was more than excited to, climb on top of a mountain of snow and fall right through. Um, I found out to be exciting and but the shoveling, the shoveling was a lot of work. It was a lot of work shoveling. Did you ever, were you ever hemmed in? Because I think that's one of the most difficult parts of the winter weather, although I've never lived in it. I've been in it when, when you were snowed in and I always try to imagine what it would be like to have to live like that. Well, lucky for me that I don't have to experience that anymore because I live on an island and so it doesn't snow, um, it doesn't snow here, but I've never been snowed in. Okay, so you didn't have that experience. That's great, because as an islander, I would imagine that would have been tough. 
<laughs> I mean, us islanders are very resilient. I think we can, uh, we can adapt to any environment that we're put in and then we can, you know, get the job done. I think we were raised like that. I like the attitude. Keep it going. <laughs> Tell us, what are you doing in St. Lucia now? Okay, so um, before COVID-19, I was the managing director of my mom's preschool. So I've, I've been doing that for two years, but I also started two more businesses. Um, one being for food, uh, it's called Days Baked Goods, and it's a delivery system for uh, basically food that my family makes and also for getting in contact with people who have food to sell. So people who have like produce, that's like, you know, ground provisions and whatnot. Um, I would go to the market, it's like an Instacart. I would go to the market, uh, buy the food for them and deliver it to their homes. Um, I also do something called Evolution Industries, which is my uh, personal project of aligning the youth in service of the elderly and not to mention the preschool as well but since COVID-19 has happened um, we have no school so I'm focusing my efforts on my other businesses. Wow look at you such an entrepreneur 24 years old and three businesses and you have three businesses I hope I'm around to see how many you have in another 24 years. Oh, by that, oh, I'll probably rule the world by then. I think so. That's where I was going with this. Mm -hmm. So now you are managing the preschool. Yes. After you lost your mother. You want to yeah. talk a little bit about losing your mom? Um, that, my mom was my first friend. Um, and losing her was like losing my guide. She was my guide and light in this world. She was the person that I went to and spoken to about all the decisions, the life-changing decisions that I had to make. That was, you know, getting a job and, you know, making a decision to leave the job. Um, I had to go to her with a, I had to go to her with confidence and tell her why I would be leaving the job. Um, I would have to go to her about any decision I made and to and basically come to her with all the explanations of why am I not um, doing this or why am I doing something. She was my confidant and I miss her terribly, but I see her in all the moms that I come into contact with, with every woman who is a mother. I see a little bit of my mom in, in there and I thank the light for all those moms who have assisted me these last two years. I am so happy that you find, you know, that you can find that in other people. Was your mom ill? Um, my mom was not. Um, she had just, she had lost her sister seven months before and she had fallen into a depression. And uh, I believe that it was losing her personal confidant friend that, you know, it was too hard on her and her heart broke literally oh this makes me want to cry i'm so sorry so you think oh, that well that's the best way i can put it for now you know that's uh, when you lose that put that one person that you were this close to like some of like your soulmate in a form of a sister i don't think some people some people can't come out of that and she was someone who she had a good fight but it was okay like she, it was her, it was her time at that at that time. I am so sorry. Well, I'm very proud of you and how strong you are. It's only been two years, right? Yes. So I, it took me two years to get to the the stage of acceptance in the five stages of grief. So you lost your mom and your aunt within the same year. Yes, I lost both my aunts, my maternal aunt and my paternal aunt. Um, my paternal aunt a few days before my birthday actually of the same year my mom died it was hard it was a lot I could imagine you're so strong I I I get told that but sometimes it feels like I need a shoulder to cry on everyone does the Everyone. strongest person needs someone there's yes. 
we are not islands, although some people think that they're islands. We all need somebody that we could lean on from time to time. And I just want you to know that I'm very, very impressed with all that you have done considering. So tell us, you took over the preschool. Yes, I did. And you've been managing it for how long now? Um, for two years, two years exactly. What has that been like for you? It has been a lot. It has been a lot because I believe in the safety and security of children. And I had to put down some, uh, I had, before taking over a business, I had to learn the business. So I had to do everyone's job and learn, just learn from what everyone was doing. And the, during this COVID time, um, I've understood what was happening. I've understood what the vision my mom had um, because she, you know, whether or not it was a time, she, I said it was a time, she also passed away prematurely. She fell asleep and did not wake up. Um, so I had to try to understand where was her vision? What was her vision? So stepping into her shoes, I had to just learn on the job. And I learned everything that I possibly can. And I finished her research, I could say, her research to, to, to determine where it is that she wanted the school to go and what kind of legacy that she's left behind. Girl, you rock. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you do. So are you a teacher in the preschool? What exactly does managing it mean? Oh, well, management means I fix things. So I, when I'm in the school, um, it's usually to fix something to see what's going on. Um, I get to spend time with the kids very little, actually. But when I do, when I, as soon as I enter the school, they usually rush to me and I get to hug each one of them. Um, that's my favorite part, actually, because before in the beginning when they would tackle me to the ground all the time they would just tackle me to the ground i have pictures to show it and i've had to teach them we have to do one at a time with hugs or else they'll put me down on the ground and they'll just completely like topple me over um i'm called auntie evo to them so to them i'm just auntie evo who shows up at the school who gives them hugs and who's trying to fix something because I'm always trying to fix something with the help of me and my dad. Um, but it's been, it's been enlightening because spending time with children is a privilege and getting to know each one as a little person with an individual personality is always exciting. If your mother had not passed away and you weren't sort of forced into this role do you think you would have done something like this i really i really can't say i really don't know because my trajectory my trajectory path was i wanted to be a pilot i wanted to do that i know i know i can i'm i'm very much on that uh journey because i do want to still do it but i just think of this this stage of my life as a detour you know, and I had to just detour and speak to the children, listen to the children, understand where they're coming from so that I can make the world or make their world a better place for them uh, in this little school that we have. If we had more 24 year olds like you, we would live in a much better world, I think. I think we're out there. I think there are 24 year olds out there trying to make a difference, but there are also 24 year olds out there who are a bit lost and that's okay because it's okay to be lost in your 20s i've learned that it's okay to not know what you want to do it's okay to just try to take time to figure it out and with the guidance of parents or guardians or even experts in um in the fields that you're interested in just just take time just take time and figure you out as a 24 year old it means you've been around people within your age group. What I, do you think, based on your observation, if you have, um, would be the reason why there's so many? It seems like a lot of them are lost. 
I, what's interesting is I can't even speak for people my age because I spend a lot of time with people over 70. I spend a lot of time with people over 60, um, over 60 going on 90 actually. I spend, that's the age group um, that you hang out with. That I'm very comfortable with actually because these are the people who are, who have been around for that long. And if they've been around for that long, they must have done something right. So I spend a lot of time with people much older than I am. That explains the wisdom that I'm hearing. Pardon? That explains the wisdom I'm hearing coming from you. But I when you were in college, didn't you have people that you hung out with that were your age group? I did not know how to make friends. Are you I, serious? I'm serious. I did not know. I still don't know how to make friends. It's easier to make friends with children. They tell, they tell it like it is. I can't, uh, it's very difficult for me to make new friends at this stage in my life. Um, I can be very friendly and whatnot, but I don't know people's intentions anymore. Like I can't tell what, like if someone's friendly with me, my first instinct will be, okay, what do they want? Like, what do they need from me? Not necessarily just genuine um, friendship, because that's rare for me to find. Well, can't you see the beautiful person that I am seeing and hearing and decide that maybe they just like me because I'm a light? Where, where is that needing to know what they want coming from? But I get it. I get it. At my age, that's usually my concern when I meet people because I've lived a life that's taught me why I should question. But you're only 24. That's why I'm asking. Well, I, you know, I don't necessarily know how to answer that question. I just know that um, with social media and everything that's blowing up and how uh, people perceive themselves versus their private selves, I like to get to know people. I like to get to know people at a home body. What that means is I like to get to know people at home. Like, who, the, who are you at home? Who are you with your parents? Who are you with your personal friends? I like to get to know people at their core and sometimes people are uncomfortable with um with me asking the deep questions because i don't do small talk i do deep talk it's like let's get to know what's going on let's get to know what's going on what are your past traumas what what did you um have to deal with what did you have to overcome tell me about the darkest thing that you think about yourself and i will show you light like that's how i perceive Aww. making friends yeah. Girl, <laughs> you're showing people like that is remarkable. I have to tell you, where does that all come from? I'm hearing a whiz, a very wise person. I'm hearing a peer, not a 24 year old. I'm especially delighted that I have this opportunity to speak with you. When I found out you were 24, I wasn't sure what direction this interview would go in, but I'm, inter I'm interested in having conversations with all types of people, and you've blown me away. Tell me more. Where does that come from, this, this ability to shine light? Considering all your trauma and your age, where do you think this, light that is coming out of you is coming from why aren't you bitter because some people when they've had as much trauma at such a tender age they have a tendency to be bitter i'm not saying everyone does but a lot of people do i i live by certain quotes actually um be the change you want to see in the world is a big of mine. Yeah. yeah right um i am the example that I want my kids to see. And by my kids, it's kids that I have coached and kids that I teach um, anything to actually, because I like to teach a kid something, no matter what kid it is. Um, and another thing is, be the person that you needed when you were younger. So I, I know when I was younger, what kind of person I needed 
So I just take that self-reflection and I continue, I be that I am that person to my children. I make sure that they're listened to, they're heard, I make sure to give them hugs and tell them that I'm proud of them, tell them how much I love them. Um, and just to give love. Just I'm, I'm a big giver of love. I have a and I have a huge, huge heart. And all I want to do is see people smile and pe see people laugh. I love to make people laugh because I believe laughter is the best medicine. So I'm usually perceived as the clown because I'm always making jokes. And my jokes sometimes are dry, dry humor. Sometimes my jokes are just, I entertain myself. I entertain myself at all corners of the life. You are a remarkable human and you're going to make me cry. And I don't let... I don't let tears flow on these interviews, but I'm hearing a person who suffered so much pain and you know, you're talking about pain. making people laugh because a lot of times people who make people laugh a lot are people who are hurting, not all the time, but they're hurting and this is how they sort of deflect their pain. Yeah, for me, it's not necessarily about deflection uh, for my pain because my pain is deep. I'm um, losing my mom was my was a big thing for me. Like it broke my heart that she, that I I no longer have her, you know, next to me to talk to or to joke around with because she was also silly just like me. And I miss dancing with her in the kitchen, and I miss I miss making coffee with her, you know. But at the end of the day, it's like she's with me in my heart, and everything that I do, I make sure that you know she would be proud of me. And she's watching over me to make sure that I'm good. Now you have me tearing up now. <laughs> it's laugh, we laugh, we laugh for the pain. I, I laugh for the pain because I rather see, I never want anyone to experience what I've experienced in life. And if they have, I want them to, I see whatever negative comes my way. I take it. I mold it, I turn it on, and I throw positive back out there. Okay, I don't let the negative get to me. I just turn it around as quickly as possible and make sure that everyone else is good. Even so much as telling people good morning or good afternoon, hey, how are you? And listening to their response and then just giving them a compliment. And my compliments are always genuine because I genuinely see the beauty in everyone and I want people to see it in themselves. I'm lost. <laughs> I don't know what to say except I hope you never change that attitude. I hope that this life does not ever change that and make you bitter. It's so difficult to be that person you're describing, the person that you are. Yes. I'm a lot like that but I have to tell you I've encountered situations and people sometimes that push me over to the other side, which is not a place where I'm comfortable. Exactly. And I'm so proud of you that you are choosing. And I think you should start some type of a forum where you could encourage other people if you're not already doing this, because it's very easy to get lost in pain and, and pain often translates to anger. Yes, or anger translates to pain. It's usually pain that's causing people's anger. Not always, but often it is. Yes, and yes. so that you have such a healthy attitude toward all of this trauma and pain at 24 years old says a lot about you. And I hope you know these things about yourself. I'm still getting to know myself, to be honest. I, um, I continue to learn what I don't like or what I do like in other people or what I don't or do like in myself. Because a lot of the times then when we don't like someone or we don't like what someone does, it's usually because of when we look internally, it's usually because of something we don't like in ourselves. So I try my best to, yeah, I try my best to not project how I feel onto other people. I try to take complete ownership of my feelings about my actions, my reactions, and my actions, inactions, and reactions. Yes, I'm only responsible for how I feel about something, and I make sure that my feelings are warranted. 
Like I can have feelings about what somebody did, but I don't lash out at the person. I reflect, I ask myself, okay, why exactly did we not like what this person did to us today? What exactly did they do to trigger something or trigger sadness or anger? And I deal with that. I self-reflect all the time. Are you for some type of therapy where they're guiding you into this behavior or is this, this is just, this is natural. This is just natural. You need to bottle that and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I like, I like genuine conversations with people. I make sure that whatever conversations that I have with someone, I like it to be genuine. And most of the time I find in the older population, you know, 60 plus, they've lived a life already. So they have nothing but honesty to give me. And they give it to me straightforward. They just like cut throat. They get right to the point and tell me, Ev, this is not how things are. This is your perception. And I love that fact about older people. And I love that fact about younger children as well. Children between the ages of zero and 12 years old are very honest. They, they, they tell you things like it is from their observation. And what I realized is all I have to do is listen to both populations. I listen to the youth, I listen to the elderly, and I make a decision based on these two perspectives because one, of, one is coming into this world and one is leaving this world. And the ones leaving this world have so much wisdom and they have so many experiences and so many stories. And I love a good story. Storytelling is everything, you know? So I love listening to both sets and make a decision for myself on my life. What you said about kids between zero and 12 is that honesty. It's true. What do you think happens past 12 that they often life. lose that? It's life. I can talk from my own personal experience and, you know, tell myself, well, the ages of, when you, when we get past 12 and we became a teenager, there's certain level of expectations. And that has to do a lot of, you know, even media as well about what you, what are you watching every day? What are you talking about every day? What are you doing every day? Are you engulfed in other people's lives? Are you engulfed in your own life, in your family's life? Like it all depends. What are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, that influences who you are. So do you spend time reflecting? Do you spend time praying? Do you spend time being thankful for everyone around you? Do you spend time counting your blessings and just being grateful for the fact that you woke up today and someone didn't wake up today? Some, a lot of people did not wake up this morning. Some people don't have the life you have. Some people are in worst of life it doesn't diminish the pains that you are going through but you have to make a clear distinction you have to ask yourself can i make my situation better can i just make my situation better by just speaking from my heart or speaking from my mind respectfully can i tell someone hey you made me angry because you did this but can you say that objectively instead of putting so much emotions into it? So it's a, it's a balancing act. Life is a balancing act. I'm not even balancing. Let me balance an act like this. Balance an act. Sometimes it's like this. And sometimes you just have to line up and just balance and find, find yourself right here. Right here. And I love the smile that goes with the balance. <laughs> so here's what... Um, you, you are 24 years old and you have yes. three businesses. Yes. I would imagine that your life has changed since the pandemic. How yes. has COVID-19 changed this whirlwind of Evelyn? <laughs> well, for one, um, it's shown me that I need to take a break. It's shown me that the last two years I've been I've been running so fast with my life. I've been doing so much and COVID has smacked me in my face and has, has told me, hey, slow down, take it easy, 
okay? We have one business that's not in operation, which is the school. So let's focus on the two other businesses. What do we have to do with our elderly? What do we have to do with our food business? Who do we have to take care of on those fronts? And that is a slower paced job for me. And I've realized that I've had to put myself first because I've done so much for everyone else that it's taken me a long time to realize, hey, it's time for you to take care of yourself. And if you are not, if I'm not 100%, how can I give 100%? So I've had to, I've had to do more self-reflection about me just simply taking care of myself. That's, yeah. So you, what, your business with the elderly, what is it? What do you do for them? Okay, so I have a couple of clients, uh, elder clients, and what I do for them is I take them to the hospital for their doctor appointments, and I wait for them. Um, if they need medication, I go out and I buy the medication for them and I bring it back to them. I make sure that they have their groceries. I make sure that they have food. Um, it's only a few of them right now, but I'm hoping that they, I'm hoping that this uh, becomes more. Um, I'm able to do more. I'm only one person now. Um, and it's basically youth in service of the elderly. And since I am a young person, I, am, I owe my life to the elderly because without them, I may not have been here today. And I speak for my, my grandmother made my mom who made me. And so I feel like I owe my grandmother that level of responsibility and care that she needs as she's growing older. Where did and you it, come from? <laughs> Pluto. Pluto, my state tree. Pluto. Yeah, yeah. My the great planet from the earth. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You came, so you're, you are from Pluto. You're not from this planet. Oh, yeah, that explains I'm everything. I will not ask this conversation again. The pieces have all fallen into place now. Seriously, I am so impressed with the person that you are. If you are this person at 24, my wish is you continue on this same path and that you do not get distracted because I think you will make a phenomenal contribution to mankind just based on what you've shared with me so far. Wow. When before you've already done so much. Seriously. Yeah, you know, whenever I'm interviewing an inspiring, wonderful person, our time flies. Can you believe our time is almost up? Before we minutes. are finished, since you're helping the elderly and a lot of the elderly are being more affected by COVID-19, have you guys had a lot of people in your country affected by COVID-19 and were they elderly? Um, well... I can't speak for the, how my dad gave a better, and I'm going to say, go to Marcus Day Baha'i Pioneer interview for the logistics of this, for this uh, answer. I'm, I'm, I'm basically throwing it, I'm throwing it the, the question to him. Um, I, to be honest, have not been paying attention to, okay. um, to the, what's going on. What I do know is that we do have elderly passing away. I have a great uncle who passed away at 107 years old. He and went to 107? Right. But these Where? Are in in uh, St. Lucia? In St. Lucia. And um, they have been doing tests on the bodies, I believe. Uh, I, re I, I think someone told me that. But I can't give any concrete information because okay. I've been focused on myself the last few weeks and trying to I'm all I'm always oblivious to the news unless the news comes to me directly unless someone sends me an article and it says hey this and that I try to just be in the present and try to work with what I know and what I have and that means taking care of my elderly who I have uh, contact with right now and not to not to focus too much on the losses okay because yeah. And then what do you want to say to young people watching? What, what's the message for people? Because you are not a young person. <laughs> you're a young person in age, but you're very wise. So what message do you have for people watching this segment? I want continue to be the change you want to see in the world. 
Two, be the person that you needed when you were younger. Three, everything is going to be okay. Stop stressing about it, okay? School is, school is not going anywhere. Stop trying to grow up too fast. Trust me, being an adult is not what is cracked out to be. Stay a kid, be happy, spend time with your family, and love Love everyone unconditionally and pray. Pray every day and be thankful that you woke up this morning because I woke up one day and my mom didn't and that has hurt me ever since. So be completely grateful that you have your family with you. Be completely happy that you have your family with you. And no matter what your circumstances is, it will only make you stronger from here if and only if you work on yourself, you work on yourself, work on your action, reflect on your inaction and control your reaction to situations. And uh, trust me, you'll get there. And if you don't get there, you can message me, find me somewhere and I will be happy to talk to you and talk you down the ledge. Would you, you like to leave your email address? Yes, uh, E-V-E-L-Y-N-D-A-Y eight five at gmail.com if you need someone to talk to now if you over flood if you flood my emails it will take me a while to get through but i can make a video if someone needs a video just to tell everyone it's going to be okay everything is going to be okay girl i am sorry this time is up i can okay. continue to speak to, with you listen you are going to become a motivational speaker. You already are. You just need to seek the platform. I have a platform now. Like talking to you is my first, my first stage of, the, of, the, of the, the, the level ups. So let's get it going. Let's keep it going because you have a lot of inspiration. Thank you so much, Evelyn. You have been wonderful. Thank you for I, having me. I am inspired. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. When a conversation is all you need to be inspired, inspiration galore. And thank you again, and I will see you next time. You are the best.